This is Twit. We have another interesting supply chain attack and a little bit of interesting uh, takeaway, I think. So the company Big Knox, B-I-G capital N-O-X, is a Hong Kong-based company which publishes, among other products, an Android emulator for PCs and Macs called Knox Player. The website claims that they have over, that is the Big Knox website, that they have over 150 million users spread through more than 150 countries and speaking 20 different languages. Though the Big Knox follower base is predominantly Asian based on what ESET found. Uh, I'll get there in a second. The Knox player is generally used by gamers to play mobile games on their PCs. So the discoverers of something fishy going on were our friends and recent Twit network sponsor, ESET. Uh, They spotted a highly targeted surveillance campaign involving the distribution of three different malware families via tailored, and here it comes, malicious updates to selected victims in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Sri Lanka. (sighs) ESET spotted the first signs of something going on last September, and the compromise continued until explicitly malicious activity, as they put it, was uncovered just last week, which prompted ESET to report the incident to Big Knox. ESET wrote, Based on the compromised software in question and the delivered malware exhibiting surveillance capabilities, we believe that this may indicate the intent of intelligence collection on targets involved in the gaming community. So, to carry out the attack, the Knox player update mechanism served as the vector to deliver trojanized versions of the software to users which upon installation, delivered three different malicious payloads, uh, including, for example, uh, the ghost rat, you know, rat as in remote access Trojan, uh, which is used to spy on its victims, capture keystrokes, and gather sensitive information. Separately, they found instances where additional malware, like the poison ivy rat, was downloaded by the Big Knox updater from remote servers controlled by the threat actor. So ESET wrote, Poison Ivy Rat was only spotted in in activity subsequent to the initial malicious updates and downloaded from attacker-controlled infrastructure. Now, unfortunately, Big Knox in Hong Kong was not very helpful. And when they were contacted by ESET, who wrote of this, they said, ESET said, we have contacted Big Knox about the intrusion, and they denied being affected. We've also offered our support to help them pass the disclosure in case they decide to conduct an internal investigation. In other words, ESET was, you know, this is now a a page. I've got the link in the show notes here uh, to to their full disclosure. So this was going to put Big Knox, you know, in the spotlight. So anyway... For one thing, if anyone hearing this is a user of Big Knox's Knox player, uh, you probably need to take responsibility yourself because <coughs> it doesn't sound like Big Knox is, is prone to for making sure that you didn't receive any malware. Uh, th- this link in the show notes contains some IOCs, uh, indicators of compromise, which anyone who's worried can check for on their own system. Um, the intrusions appear to be gaming world centric and highly targeted. So it doesn't look like it's a big widespread campaign. ESET said, in comparison to the overall number of active Knox player users, there is a very small number of victims. According to ESET's telemetry, more than 100,000 of our users, meaning ESET's users, have Knox Player installed on their machines. Among them, only five users received a malicious update. Wow, that's showing surprising. That oper- yeah, uh, showing that Operation Night Scout, as they termed it, is a highly targeted operation. The victims ah. are based... 
Yes. Uh. Yeah. And again, as we know, the more people you infect, the greater the opportunity for discovery. Um, and but but it was probably the the infection of those five users that overlapped with e sets being in their system watching what was going on that put e set onto this behavior in the first place. So anyway, th th those victims, as I mentioned, were in, are in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Sri Lanka. Uh, they said we were unsuccessful finding correlations that would suggest any relationships among victims. On the other hand, they've got, you know, it's all they're seeing is those five that happen to be using ESET. Who knows overall? Because because uh, Big Knox is saying that they've got 150 million users, not 100,000. So, you know, th there it may j also be that ESETs overlap, uh, you know, with targeted victims uh, wasn't very big. They said we were unsuccessful finding correlations that would suggest any relationships among victims. However, Based on the compromised software in question and the delivery malware exhibiting surveillance capabilities, we believe this may indicate the intent of collecting intelligence on targets somehow involved in the gaming community. Um, and then in their posting details and diagrams, the precise operation of the Knox player update system is, is explained. And after that, they conclude we have sufficient evidence to state that the Big Knox infrastructure, and then we have some, some domain names, res06.bignox.com, was compromised to host malware. And also to suggest that their HTTP API infrastructure at api.bignox.com could have been compromised. In some cases, additional payloads were downloaded by the Big Knox updater from attacker-controlled servers. So not from, the, the malware didn't always come from Big Knox itself. Sometimes, somehow, there was a URL change. And in fact, that's what they said. This suggests that the URL field provided in the reply from the Big Knox API was tampered with by attackers. And, you know, they said HTTP API. I didn't look closely enough to see whether it was actually HTTPS course, if, it, if they have an unencrypted API, then anyone anywhere in line could intercept and tweak uh, the URL in, a, in, in the reply field. So what we have is a much smaller scale version of the now infamous SolarWinds intrusion, uh, which one way or another leveraged the software updating channel to quietly slide malware into a victim's machine. And, you know, it's this sort of put me in mind of things you and I used to say, Leo, which and we sort of revised ourselves since. But once upon a time, I believed that I could successfully take responsibility for not getting my own system infected. You know, we've talked about this through the years. Don't download anything that a website tells you you need. That's never going to end well. Don't click on links in sketchy email. Be very wary of anything you download from a third-party download repository. Whenever possible, go to the source. You know, get the thing you want directly from the publisher and so on. But today, we all need to face the fact that we no longer have that control over our own machine's destinies. Many of the tools, utilities, and widgets that we use are being periodically updated. Uh, for me, Notepad++ comes immediately to mind because it is constantly wanting to update itself. You know, not only is that annoying since it seems to be working just fine for me, but it's also inherently dangerous. You know, if their build process or their update server were to get compromised, and we've covered stories in the past where that has happened to well-meaning organizations, in a very short time, remember it even happened to Lenovo at one point, in a very short time, a huge number of Windows users would be infected because their instances of Notepad++ said, oh, I've got a better, shinier version. And everyone would say, oh, got to have that. Maybe it's better somehow. Uh, 
you know, and so what the point is that the fact that they have this leverage over an install base of Notepad++ users puts them in the crosshairs of the bad guys. It makes them a high value target. Bad guys would love to get their malware just automatically downloaded into all of the Notepad++ users in the world. So for me, the solution is Windows Defender, which I now long I now no longer recommend only to others. <laughs> I, I look at it and, and it's it's the green little happy house with the flag on yeah. it down in my in my tray. You know, I depend upon it as well. And since at the moment I'm sitting in front of a Windows 7 machine, I'm thankful to Microsoft for continuing to update Win 7's Defender, even though they have otherwise abandoned Windows 7 and wish I wasn't still using it, while I and nearly half of all the other desktops that are running Windows in the world. So, you know, I was recently stating uh, that any responsible company needs to be performing continuous network intrusion detection surveillance because defenses have become too porous compared to the external pressure that exists to get in. And in an exact analogy, at the personal level, I believe that today's end users must deploy their own local surveillance within their machines. It, you know, it's no longer the case that we, that our actions explicitly invite stuff in. And so if we don't do that, nothing will bite us. Anything that we've got, which is saying, oh, there's an update available, click here to get it, you know, you already trust that thing because it hasn't bitten you before, but at any moment it could. So um, I'm a 100% now subscriber to the idea that you need something that is that is vigilant in your system that is looking at everything that goes on. And, you know, and I know Defender's workings. I have like some old C drives uh, archived on an, on a semi-offline drive. And sometimes I'll open them and, and search through for something that I know I had then. And, I, and back then I had a directory of, you know, well-marked malware. And sure enough, Defender pops up and says, what the hell are you doing? And it's like, okay, relax. It's okay. This is just, you know, I'm a security guy. I do research. I have, I have this stuff for a reason. But, you know, so it's just sort of nice for, when it goes off and I go, oh, yeah, that is, you know, that is true. I forgot about that directory. <laughs> Maybe it'd be a good time to delete it, as a matter of fact. Um, so anyway, I, I just, I, th I thought it was interesting that here we've got at the user level, individuals being targeted and, and surveilled. Uh, which just put me in mind of the, the shift that we've had. You know, here I'm arguing that everything needs to update itself, right? I don't know. Uh, notepad? Just leave my notepad alone. It works just fine. I, in fact, I think maybe I should turn off automatic updates <laughs> because I've just convinced myself that this is a real danger.